Good morning. This is the 20th of 53 consecutive five mile walks from the Grestford Memorial to the Miner's Rescue and back again. Yesterday, we took a look at the national mainstream media, who, while certainly not acting with full altruistic intent, bad news is their business, certainly played a vital role in ensuring the events at Gresswood received sustained national and international attention. Retrospectively, we know an impressive £33 million was donated to the disaster fund. But what mattered most to the women left behind in the immediate aftermath was cash. Most, if not all, of the wives would be relying on the meagre weekly wage earned by their husbands to survive into the next week. But as payday was at the end of the week, the men had their wages with them when the explosion struck, and the widows never received a single penny. You might ask, why didn't the mine owners, at such a catastrophic time, honour the wages of the buried men? If you consider, though, they refused because they said the men had already been paid. And if you go on to consider how the wages of the dead men ceased to be paid from the moment of the explosion, and if from there you consider that the wives of dead miners with no children were evicted from their mine owned homes, then you've understood the response by the mine owners. Immediate charity was what was needed by the women until official provision was established. Urgent appeals for charity were made by the Mayor of Wrexham, the Lord Lieutenant of Denbyshire, the Daily Mirror and the Mayor of London. The response was overwhelming. Stanley Williamson hints at something more than mere sympathy in anatomy of a disaster and suggests that the public had a conscience about the miner, the dirt, darkness and danger of his work and the pitiful reward he received for it. Distress of the unending unemployment, the dereliction, the poverty. Whatever motivated the public, monies received gave immediate relief and thankfully, in short time, weekly allowances were being made to the dependents. The administration of the funds was an enormous task, playing a vital role in the support effort well beyond the early days of the aftermath. The controversies did arise. Over the preceding months, questions would be asked of decisions that prohibited any dependent to be better off than they would have been had their husband still been alive. Questions would be asked about large sums of money being frozen while stringent eligibility criteria was being applied. And questions would be asked about the amount of monies from the fund being spent on perceived surplus administrators. Away from some bureaucratic tensions, the most important thing was that relief had been forthcoming, thanks to the unprecedented generosity of the general public. And over the next couple of films, we'll focus on some of the acts of human kindness that were witnessed in the aftermath of the disaster. Other than the response to Aberfan decades later, Gresford evoked arguably the greatest response to any Welsh disaster. Today's walk was dedicated to Daniel Hughes of the rescue team, Francis O. Hughes, Harry Hughes, John Hughes and Peter J. Hughes. And today's song is The Circus by Erasure. 